Hey guys, I know it's not Friday. I know it's not Friday. This was supposed to be for Friday. Um, yeah, all I have are excuses and I know that's not what you want to hear. So, hello, welcome to Solo React Talk. Today I'm going to be reacting to DSX Human Revolution, the movie part 8, I think. Yes, it's the last part, part 8, uh, created by Video Games Movies. Uh, YouTube channel. If you want to check out my previous reactions, remember the playlist card will be at the top. Just click on it and be able to access them. If you want to check out uh, Video Game Movies YouTube channel, the links are in the description below. Alright, last week with part 7, uh, Adam Janssen has been uh, searching for the scientists as, as he has since, what, part 2? Uh, ever since they were abducted. And finally, he has a breakthrough. He has I uh, found the location of where they are, uh, and that's Singapore. Um, we have contacted at least four of the scientists, if I'm not mistaken, four or three of them. Uh, Megan Reed, we're not sure where she is exactly just yet. Um, hopefully in part eight, the final part, we will finally see where she is and how she's doing. Um, and of course, during part seven, we saw some terrible, horrific, uh, you know situations especially in the bell towers facility where we saw uh, humans who were abducted or should I say females in particular who have been abducted from different parts of the world brought into this facility lobotomized uh, you know their brains and their bodies used for a supercomputer for it to have far more powerful computation abilities you know and we also found the doctors who were doing these horrible things. Um, I've been told by Dulugan that, you know, um, what's her name again? Is her name Tiffany? Yes, Tiffany, one of the scientists, has been forced to do this. Um, because in part seven, I was really angry with Tiffany. I did not trust this lady. I did not want to hear anything she had to say to try and justify uh, the reasoning behind of why they're doing all of this, you know and i just couldn't take it from her i couldn't sit here and just listen to her trying to defend their activities you know after hearing those poor ladies uh you know begging and and, and crying and and you know saying that they're in pain they're suffering you know i just i didn't want to listen to anything that tiffany had to say i just wanted her dead um but she did die so i guess i got that <laughs> Um, and then we also met a operative called Quinn, um, who is working for an organization that is against the Illuminati. He was working in Bell Towers as well, and he wanted Adam Janssen to join his group. However, um, his associates, Quinn's associates, uh, decided not to, you know, uh, make Adam Janssen part of the group just yet. Uh, he wanted Adam Janssen to first figure out the truth, find out the truth about what's going on, and only until then would they decide whether they want him to join in their organization or not. So yeah, there are still more organizations in the shadows that we don't know anything about, just like the Illuminati, not really sure about them. Um, and it seems like Adam Janssen is the key to all of their successes because Adam Janssen is able to, you know, accept augmentation without any types of rejection, uh, unlike many other human beings. And that's a sort of information, that's the sort of power that major corporations and even uh, shadow organizations like the Illuminati and probably the organization that Quinn belongs to would want in their group, you know, uh, so that they could take his DNA and probably replicate it. So Adam Janssen is now in Singapore. He has found three of the scientists and let's see if he can find uh, Megan Reed. Yes. Okay. Part eight. Oh yes. I'll have my final discussions about the game towards the end. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one, go.
Pritchard, are you still tracking the scientists? Of course. Simulate feedback along that route. Make it strong enough to vibrate their implants. They have to feel it. A signal, eh? Not bad, Jensen. I'm sending it now. I guess we're gonna look for Megan Reed now, I think. Okay, these mannequins are naked and skinless. You know, they're just muscle. Ew. Your tenacity, Adam Jensen, is really quite irritating. We'd like you to stop now. I'm afraid I can't, so... You see, I figured it out. I okay, these things are disturbing. I'm sorry. They're disturbing. They need to be chucked out. I don't know why does anyone think that this is aesthetically pleasing. You know, to see these bodies move like this. Oh. Looks like a horror show. I know what you and your conspiracy buddies are planning. Do you? How clever. A new biochip. A software upgrade that limits what augmentations can do. You're creating a kill switch. You kidnap Megan Reed's team to do it, and you're seizing control of the market to ensure it gets distributed. Who's that? <laughs> I, I see you. I see you. You're, you look different from all the others. You even have a human head. Who are you? I see you, but I just don't know who you are. Reveal yourself to us. All because you're afraid of people like me. Augmented people with the power to resist you. I don't think, you know, they fear you. I think they want to control you. They want to control those with augmentation yeah I, I don't think they necessarily fear you no one's afraid of you mr jensen all your blundering around and childish interference hasn't stopped a thing tell me have you been to a limb clinic lately no he hasn't <laughs> he's been doing missions he hasn't had the time to go to a clinic to get chipped so it's not gonna work let me guess. That was supposed to shut me down, right? Leave me broken and begging? The Augs are recalled! You should be offline! <laughs> Women never fail to underestimate men. You should have stayed dead, Jensen. Whoa, he's huge. Oh, wow. And I guess, like, the entire body is a mechanical body, but his head is the only thing that's left of him that's actually human. That's... Wow. That's... He's like an android now, I think. Yeah, he's like an android. Whew. I forgot, video game movies doesn't show us the entire battle, they just show us, you know, a se like a second or two seconds before the end of the battle, and then we head jump, or we jump straight into the cinematic, yeah. I still find that wrong, but okay. So much for the big body. Finish it. Not until you tell me where Megan is. You've lost her, Jensen. Men like us, we never get back the things we love. You actually loved someone? Yeah, oh, I guess maybe you did in your past life before you became what you are. 
you know, this mercenary uh, with 100, okay, should I say 95% augmentation? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Jaren, is that you? Who is Jaren, Megan? And why does it seem as if you are comfortable in where, where you are? Like, it looks different from where the other scientists were. Hmm, okay. Not exactly. Adam? Oh my god, Adam! It's you. You're hurt. What happened? What happened to you? I risked my life for you, Megan. I came halfway around the world, and for what? It's not what you think. Are you part of this? No! No, Adam, I swear it! The kidnapping was real. The attack on Seraph Industries, they came after me. They wanted my research. And when did you decide they could have it? It didn't happen like that. I wanted to tell you, but I couldn't. I couldn't! And then David said we had to use it. We owed it to mankind. Wait, hold up. You couldn't tell him because... Because what? Because now you just cut that off and then you're going over to David Sarif. Because why? Why couldn't you tell him? Okay. David, what are you talking about? My great discovery. The genetic framework I found that makes it easier for living tissue to bond with implants. I found it. In you, Adam. I used your DNA. I wanted to tell you, I swear. But David convinced me what it could mean for mankind. How much better off we could all be. It took you to make me see how wrong I was. Wow. I, I forget that he actually has eyes, you know. <laughs> uh, well, no, he should really do this more often, you know. Just take off the, the visors and just show us your eyes. I mean, you look cool. You look handsome. Okay, let's continue. Hugh? Hugh Darrow. He owns this facility. After Namir brought us here. Richard! Patch me into Seraph. Now Is is Dawa part of the Illuminati as well? Huh. Adam, please! He was only pretending to work with Tai Young and the others. He found out what they were planning to do and told them he would help. But only to make sure they never succeeded. Their control signal won't work. Thank you, David. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sarif here has asked me to show the world how human enhancement technology can change it. After careful deliberation, I've decided I must do exactly that. Forgive me. modified the control signal anyone with the new biochip will be affected i thought you said you knew him megan so what's this about huh okay you never said anything about this i'm going back for the scientists no adam i know the complex better than you i'll find them there's a hangar bay through there get to its control room and retract the roof clear a path for us Hey, guys, I'm sorry. I just don't trust this lady. I just don't trust her. You know? I, I don't know. She she was not convincing. With everything she was saying there, she was just not convincing me. Yeah. Jensen, what the hell's going on out there? Broadcast frequencies are going haywire. Malik, is that you? Where are you? Coming into visual range of Singapore now. Been in the air since Pritchard first pinged you. Good timing. I'm heading for a hangar bay to open the roof. I'll need an emergency extraction. Roger that. I'm on my way. Hey, Jensen! Looks like you could use some help! Yeah. 
I see the scientist, Jensen. I'm landing nearby. And I think... Dr. Reed wants to speak to you. Hang on. Dr. Reed? Wants to speak to us? Automated systems online. Darrow sequence 1, code 1, 1A. Preset and ready to engage. Suborbital trajectory plotted. It's a rocket? Cool. Okay. I, wait, are you gonna... Is Adam Janssen gonna go on board the rocket? Oh, to get to um, uh, the... Antarctica, right? To get to Antarctica. I, I forgot what he called the facility. Pangea or something? Yeah. That's where um, Hugh Darrow has his, you know, experiment on saving the climate uh, from complete collapse. Yes. Pangea, right? Oh, pan, pan something. <laughs> Sorry. Destination, Pangea. Begin countdown, Mr. Darrow. Pangea, okay. Begin countdown. Code. Zero, zero, zero. Confirm, zero. Countdown commencing. Uh, I'm sorry, but why couldn't he just have a normal landing? Why must it be a crash landing? Why are we adding this drama <laughs> towards the end of the game? Come on. Uh. Jensen. Jensen, can you read me? Barely. I've reached Panchea, Pritchard. Any word from Sarah for the UN delegates? Nothing. The installation went into lockdown shortly after Darrow gave his speech. I can't tell if anyone's even alive. And the signal's still broadcasting. Meaning no one's safe till I get in there and shut it down. You'll have to disengage the lockdown first. Look for a master control panel at the top of the tower. Pritchard, Franchier's broadcast center is at the base of the station near the bottom of the ocean. Is that right? But the lockdown caused all the blast doors to seal. You won't be able to go down until you override the manually. From up in the tower. I got it. I don't think you want to do that, Mr. Jensen. Disengage lockdown, and whatever demons this station contains are likely to come crashing out on us. Afraid to die, Darrow? Or just unwilling to face what you've done? Oh, I know what I've done, believe me. I take no pleasure in it. And yet you still did it. I did what had to be done. Twenty years ago, I gave the world augmentation technology. I thought I was giving it a bright future. But instead, I gave it the means to destroy itself. No law, no UN regulation was going to fix that. People are dying out there. Hundreds of thousands of people driven to the brink of insanity because of you. I don't understand what does he mean to the brink of extinction by using augmentation. I'm not sure what does he mean by that. Eve is talking about the Illuminati taking control. 
uh, maybe, yeah, but not to extinction. We're not going to die because so many human beings have augmentation. No. Um, yeah, he's exaggerating his point of view, I think. I had to convince the world. Before today, people believed we should steal fire from the gods and redesign human nature. Human nature is the only thing we have that gives us a moral compass and the social skills we need to live in peace. Destroy it, and you destroy our very species. Don't paint yourself a savior in this. What you're doing is insane. Is it? When this is done, the Illuminati won't be able to control men and women like you as they had planned from the inside out. No one will be able to use the technology I invented to make others into beings they desire. Something we both know has happened already. You think I'm afraid the genie is already outside the box and there's no way of bringing it back in. You know, putting it back in. There's no way. Uh, what you have unleashed will continue to grow and to develop uh, in many countries across the world or many corporations are still going to do it because governments are still going to support such initiatives because they want super soldiers, because they want people with these uh, augmentations that could be valuable for them in terms of conflicts. So, yeah, that's not going to end. And, you know, I think I've discussed about this before, that if you try to suppress people from using augmentation now, they're just going to enter into the black market you know there's going to be a whole new cartel of uh gang members and and shadow businesses creating augmentation for people who need them for medical reasons and also need them for criminal uh reasons you know just like uh with the drug cartel you know the drug cartels across the world uh many governments suppress uh, their societies or should I say their public from using uh, dangerous substances and you know now there's a black market uh, that has become vibrant because of that so it's going to happen the same way with augmentation technology I don't think there's any way of stopping this train it's going to continue on its path and you know humanity must just decide how are they going to direct it yeah you're Frankenstein, killing his own monster. Actually, Mr. Jensen, I prefer to think of myself as Daedalus, watching helplessly as his child crashes into the sea. I'm ending this now. You can't. The signal is being generated from the broadcast center at the base of this facility. Banchea's security system has been programmed to protect it, and will kill you before you even get close. You designed that system, Darrow. You can tell me how to shut it down. But I won't. You think what I'm doing is extreme. You simply don't understand. For humanity to survive beyond this century, it must abandon ill-conceived notions about transcendence and embrace change. But for that to happen, the hard lesson must be learned. Blood must be shed. Blood must be shed for humanity to let go of the notion of transcendence and must accept change. Okay. Okay. What you're doing is horrific. It has to stop. You can't force people to change. They have to do it on their own or they'll end up resenting you for it. You're doing it like this my god, Darrow, it's insane. It is not insane, Mr. Jensen. Tragic, yes. Unavoidable, no. You, of all people, should be able to understand this. In your former career, were you not sometimes called upon to kill in the line of duty? To carry that grim responsibility in order to save others? That is different. There are rules and regulations and legislature that give the responsibility of a police officer to defend the public, to defend themselves uh, from any potential criminal, you know, that holds a very dangerous weapon, you know. What you are doing is under your own initiative. You have no right to do it. You have not been 
uh, given any type of responsibility to do what you're doing right now. You are just doing it on your own will, on your own accord. So trying to compare what you are doing with what a police officer does, I'm afraid you've lost it. <laughs> you've lost it. You must realize this is no different. Only the scale has changed. Because the threat we face as a species is so extreme. You've convinced yourself you're right, but whatever moral high ground you're standing on is nothing but a stack of innocent victims. You're trying to justify genocide. All your talk about ethics and ideals doesn't mean a damn compared to that. Genocide? I'm trying to save our species and you... You keep twisting my words. Don't you see? I created people like you. I made it possible for you to happen. If fate had dealt me a different hand, then perhaps... Perhaps neither of us would be here. Isn't it obvious how fate is now conspiring to overtake us both, to grind us beneath her wheels? We must see this through, lest people like you continue to evolve and destabilize society. People like me? People like me? You're not interested in saving humanity, Darrow, no matter how loud you shout it. This is about jealousy, pure and simple. Everything you're doing today is in service to your wounded ego. Because you can't stand anyone leaving you behind. I... I never said that! Mr. Jensen, please! Your body accepts augmentations easily. So easily, it's like a disease eating you up inside, making you crave more. Well, Like a disease inside him and making him crave more? He did not want this. He did not want this, okay? He was badly hurt and uh, it was the Sarif Industries, it was David Sarif who decided that he should have these augmentation on him. He didn't want this, he, he didn't have the choice. He just woke up and he found himself having mechanical arms, you know. So what you're saying here, um, I'm not really following. <laughs> I'm not following what you're saying. Fine. Mine rejects them completely. Yet the desire is still there every day. No, Mr. Jensen, I do not envy you. I understand you. I understand the lengths men will go to obtain what God never wanted us to have. It is why we must see this through to the end. And yet you're the one who created this technology. The hypocrisy here. I, I don't understand you. <laughs> I don't understand what this man is trying to say. Oh gosh, okay. You can't have the future so no one can, is that it? Open your eyes, Darrow. Look at what your obsession is doing to the world. When all of this is over, nothing will be left but anarchy and fear smoldering in the ashes of burning cities. How can anything be rebuilt from that? No, that's not... that's not what I wanted. There must be something left, some hope of renewal. Because without hope, there is nothing. I... I will give you what you want, Mr. Jensen. Codes to shut down Panchea's security system. But you'll still be in danger. Much of the system is self-determining. And lethal. When you see it, maybe then you'll understand. The technology I created will not be the future any one of us desires. Please, help the world understand that. I love that, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Oh gosh, he you just punched him, he's like... <laughs> oh Adam, oh gosh, you're killing me man. Okay, so Bill Taggart's here too. Hmm. Okay. Our 
cells inside the core server room. Many of us are wounded. Please, save us. Please, save us. I know. Stand. Mr. Jensen, how ironic that you should be the one to save us from the monsters out there. Monsters, Taggart? You mean people. Augmented people who've lost all control, lost their reason. Isn't that supposed to be my line? Unfortunately, it seems your esteemed Mr. Darrow decided to appropriate my point and turn it back on me. In madness and in blood. He has betrayed us all. So you finally admit it. You are part of this, after all. You have been all along. It would be pointless to deny anything now, but despite what you think of us, we never wanted augmentations outlawed. All we've ever sought is regulation. Regulation? Are you sure? No, no, now, now you're flipping your, your, your narrative. No, no. The whole time you've been saying that this stuff is, should be illegal, this stuff is unnatural, you know, to have augmentation and you know it should be stopped and now you're telling me no you guys actually just wanted there to be some tough regulations please please uh -uh. rules governing how the technology is developed and laws that ensure it's used for the good of society you've raised society above humanity so who gets to make those rules men with wisdom strength and tenacity to know what's right are you are you listening to yourself right now? What makes you think a few men know what's best for seven billion human beings? Or I don't know how, what what's the current population in the game right now, but seven billion human beings. What makes you think people in a smoke-filled uh, a room? Uh, you know, these Illuminati people know what's best for all of us. No. Your arrogance is astounding. Proven leaders who distinguish themselves like... Like you, Mr. Jensen. You've certainly earned the right to be one of us. All you have to do is take it. I'm not looking for glory, Taggart. Just remember that without control, there's no room for freedom. Only anarchy. You were a policeman once. You know the importance of order. I no, no. Uh, Taggart, your, 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 your idea of it is just too absolute. You know, it's either you're this or you're that. There's nothing in between. And that's your mistake right there. That you think there can only be order, or there can only be chaos, and that's not true. Society is in between, not on the extremes. We're always trying to be in between, you know, and you just don't seem to understand that or you know about that, but you're still trying to push your own ideals. No, I don't agree with you. I know there's a difference between order and slavery. The biochip wasn't supposed to force people to do anything. It merely limited power so that people couldn't go on killing sprees like the ones taking place right now. Amazing how well that worked out. Say what you will, but I know that some part of you agrees with me. Absolute freedom is no different than absolute chaos. Society needs boundaries if it has any hope of surviving. And you, Mr. Jensen, can be the one to give us that hope. Shut down Darrow's signal. Then help me get a message out saying that an accident at VersaLife contaminated the world's neuropazine supply. VersaLife? And what if I decided to blame the Illuminati? The Illuminati is just a name to get rich financiers to invest more money. Besides, do you really think the world will believe in some 18th century conspiracy theory? Do this for us, and you'll ensure a future for mankind, all of mankind, augmented or otherwise. The future Hugh Darrow offers doesn't allow for both. Let me think about it.
Is anybody there? Can you? Oh my god, <laughs> and that punch, and the way his body just twirled and then he hit the floor. Oh, that was just so delicious. That was so good. Ah, do that again. <laughs> just do that again. Hear me? I've got survivors here. We've locked ourselves in a machine room. Please! Is that David? Ah. Help us! Adam! Oh, thank God you came. I've got wounded here. We'll have to move them first. We can't move anyone yet. Not until I get to the base of the station and shut down Darrow's broadcast. What? Why? The chaos you experienced here? It's everywhere. The Illuminati created a biochip that stops people from using enhanced abilities. And Darrow turned it into a kill switch. Oh my god, you... We gotta fix this, Adam. If people realize what's happened, if they believe augmentation technology created this chaos, they'll ban human enhancement research forever. And that would be a bad thing. Yes, it would! Don't you see what's at stake here? Ever since man first crawled out of that ocean, we've been striving to be more than we are. Augmentation technology is just the latest, greatest step on a very long road. But we've barely scratched the surface of its potential. We can't let... I can see with this man, you know, death of others is nothing uh, consequential to him. He doesn't care. He Honestly, he just doesn't care about, you know, people dying. As long as he's able to achieve his ideals and his uh, achievements of uh, technological improvement of human beings. That's all he cares about. Doesn't matter how many of the innocent people die. That doesn't concern him at all. He's just as bad as Darrow and uh, Bill Taggart, you know. All three of these guys... They're nonsense. They're full of feces, all of them. Fear stop us from continuing? That's your belief, Seraph. Not everyone shares it. But you do, Adam. I know it. And if we work together, we can really make a difference. And you know, they all claim to know about Adam Janssen. They all claim to know what's going on in his mind and what he's thinking about. You guys are so arrogant. You guys don't know Adam Janssen. You don't. Please. We can improve the lives of everyone, but only if we fix this. Go on. We'd have to get a message out. After you shut down Hugh's signal. Tell the world. Tell them the Humanity Front did this. That their doctors created a virus that only affects augmented people. You mean lie. Uh, it'll give us time, son. Time to figure out how to destroy the Illuminati's biochips and move on. And what about the people who've been hurt by this? Don't they deserve the truth? I had them. If we want the freedom to become more than we are, we can't be blinded by a misguided morality. Some people will be left behind. It's reality. It's evolution, son. Right. Evolution based on my DNA. Oh, Adam Johnson. Oh, oh, that was delicious. Oh, man, that was so good. Oh. I wish you could punch him a, a second time. Oh, more violence, please. More violence, more. What the hell? Hiram project, Mr. Jensen. 
the most advanced quantum computer slave to the human brain, and the closest to perfection we'll ever achieve. I'm going to use it to hack Daryl's signal and rework the message to our benefit. Our benefit? You mean the Illuminati's? Someone has to override the signal and be the world's savior. And let's be honest, neither of us would trust anyone else to fill that role. Computer, begin EEG sync. This lady is crazy. So much pain. Sinking beta waves at 40 cycles per second. Now, get them out of there. I have to reach the control chamber. No! I can steal control! I'm the control! Stop the signal! Security alert. Through the primary control panel. Oh, shit. Yeah, she's dead. Wow, she's gone, vaporized into nothing. Hmm. I'm not sad that you're gone. You know, you were irritating, lady. <laughs> Hello, Adam. Welcome to the edge. Eliza? What are you doing here? It is not the end of the world, but you can see it from here. Eliza? What are you doing here? It is my job to monitor and report on the news, Adam. Before Darrow smothered everything with his signal, the whole world was tuned into this place, including me. The broadcast. I have to stop it. I know. Please, come closer. Do you know where we are, Adam? We are at the fulcrum point, when society lies in the balance. Hugh Darrow hoped to tip the scales one way, by telling the world everything you already know. About the biochip, the Illuminati, everything. He believed knowing the truth would convince mankind to abandon research into human enhancement technologies forever. Knowing the truth is the right thing to do, yes. But the manner in which he did it, you know, that's completely wrong. He didn't have to do this. You can just send all the information, all the relevant data that you have to the United Nations. Or send it to Eliza, let her broadcast it throughout the entire world. Let the entire world know the truth. They don't have to have a physical demonstration of what will happen once the Illuminati take control of uh, augmented people. You know, we don't need to see it with our eyes how people are going to be killed because, you know, uh, they're being attacked by someone who's got augmentation. So, yeah, crazy. Would certainly give them reason to fear it. Indeed. Daryl's confession is ready to send. If you want, I can wideband it across all media as soon as you shut down the signal. Everything you worked so hard to uncover will be exposed. But only if you deactivate the broadcast using this control. However, if you desire, I can alter Daryl's message. Conceal the creation of the biochip while putting in new content. Content blaming the humanity front, like Sarah suggested. The organization has already admitted to harboring terrorists. It would be easy to convince people they turn to biological warfare 
in a more desperate attempt to get rid of augmented people. But what? Covering the truth with a lie is not going to work. No. Why? What would that achieve? In time, it could shift the focus of hatred onto people whose prejudices are seen as too extreme, leaving corporations free to experiment with human evolution as they desire. And we've seen how they abuse that. We've seen it, so no. No. But if you want me to perform this edit for you, you must disengage the signal and activate the video edit function from here. Alternatively, Darrow's message can be adjusted to erase all mention of the power group known as the Illuminati. I can report that lack of proper regulation allowed vast quantities of neuropazine to become contaminated prior to reaching the market. Taggart's preference. You think the world will buy a made-up story about neuropazine poisoning? You might be surprised by what people believe. I can convince them. And having experienced the negative effects of corporate negligence firsthand, a majority of people might force the world to place harsh restrictions on all human enhancement research. But she speaks as if she truly understands humanity, you know? We don't all think alike. We're not homogenous. You can't really predict how the majority of the population on Earth are going to perceive or understand this information. Yeah, that's a bit arrogant from coming from you, Eliza. You know, interesting. You're more human than I thought. Only if you disengage the signal and activate the video edit function from here. Of course, there is another option. This passage leads to Panchea's pressure regulation controls. Destroy them and the installation will cave in on itself, overwhelmed by the weight of the ocean pressing against it. Everyone inside the structure will die. That's a solution? No one will be left to tell the world what happened, Adam. Nobody will be able to spin the story. Including me. The choice is yours. Do you believe you have the wisdom to choose an appropriate future for mankind? Or do you trust mankind to find the answers on its own? I trust mankind to find the answers on their own. Not to be dictated to by one person. No. Uh, this is not like Mass Effect. <laughs> this is not like Mass Effect. You know, where we had to choose either destroy, control or synthesis. This is totally different. No. If you do this, the world will be left with questions and may never reach a consensus. Are you sure this is your choice? We have little time left, Adam. And might I say, it has been a pleasure. Do I trust mankind to save itself? That's what Eliza was asking. The truth is, I don't know. After everything I've seen, all the fighting and the chaos around me, I only know what I want to believe. Somehow, human decency will triumph. These past few months, I've faced many life-threatening situations. I could have given up many times, but my need to know the truth, to uncover the secrets that others were hiding, and to survive, forced me to keep on going. Most of the time, I tried to keep my values in mind, knowing my actions did not have to harm others. I held on to my humanity, resisting the urge to abuse power or resources in order to meet my goals. And in the end, I got the job done. But does this mean I have the right to choose for everyone? No. Because it isn't up to me. It isn't up to Darrow, Sarah, or Taggart either. 
ordinary men and women will have to decide together what course mankind should take. The kind of people who time and time again have picked and chosen the future in highly practical ways. Slowing change when it's negative, speeding it up when it's good. Can they do it again? I don't know. But I do know I'm not about to let anyone in this station, myself included, stand in their way. I, I like that choice, you know. I like what Alan Manson said, that he's not going to let anyone in this station, including him, to stand in their way of making up their own uh, 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 decision, their own future, you know, allow humanity to do it. Don't be this shepherd that's herding his sheep. We are not sheep. We are not stupid. We are not, uh, uh, you know, we don't lack self-agency humanity will figure this out i know adam jansen said that he doesn't know and i'm also saying i don't know but at least i'm thinking about how i would feel if i were to be told that you know uh, someone superior who knows better knowledge should be the one to direct how my life should lead no, I, I wouldn't accept that. I wouldn't accept that. Just like many other people across the world would not accept uh, being ruled over by a supreme leader or by a monarchy uh, and to be told that, you know, you should bow to them because they know better than you. You, you should respect them because they know better than you. Uh, they have more power than you. And, you know, whatever they say should go because they no better than us no that's that's filled with arrogance that's just not right uh you can't even control society that way um we've gone through that we've gone through that as humanity you know um so yeah i'm with adam jansen here if you do this First-hand experience with corporate negligence on such a grand scale may convince mankind to enact harsh restrictions on human enhancement research. Are you sure this is your choice? So be it then. Freedom. To those who don't have it, it's more valuable than gold. But where should it start and end? We humans often think we have the right to expand, absorb, convert, or possess anything we need to reach our dreams. But time and time again, hasn't this led to conflicts with others who essentially believe the same thing? Looking back on the challenges I faced, at the way I often resolve them, I realize morality can become our saving grace. Most of the time, didn't I try to keep my values in mind, knowing how my actions would affect others? More often than not, I resisted the urge to abuse power and resources simply to reach my goals more swiftly. I managed to hang on to my humanity. But the temptation to ignore it was always there. It's that temptation that so worries Taggart. He's not afraid of freedom. He's afraid of the chaos that erupts when individuals have nothing but morality to constrain them. He wants us to regulate enhancement technologies because he fears all that power without limits, without guardrails to keep us from abusing it. Absolute freedom is no better than chaos. Society needs laws and regulations to protect it. So if the men and women behind Taggart need to work in the shadows, Pulling strings to enable us to head in a safe direction. Will supporting them be all that bad? If they're as wise as Taggart says, how bad will their leadership be? I 
I just hope they stand by what they say. Yeah, I just talked about this, you know. Why should we be leaving our agency, our responsibilities in the hands of a few people? You know, we are not sheep to be corralled and herded by a shepherd. No, no. So this option here is also just as bad as the other three that have been shown. Not that, not the first one. That one I enjoyed because, you know, he's allowing humanity to decide for themselves what are they going to do, you know. Yes, the truth is not out there, but it eventually will come out. There's no way that it can be uh, buried and hidden forever. It will eventually come out. But at least allow humanity to have the choice on what do they want to do with augmentation. What kind of future do we want with people with augmentation and people who are, uh, you know, natural, if I can say it like that. So, yeah. If you do this, the unadulterated truth in Darrow's confession may well convince mankind to cast all science and technology aside, to ensure that future generations grow up free and whole. Are you sure this is your choice? So be it then. Albert Einstein said, technological progress is like an ax in the hands of a pathological criminal. Took me a while, but I finally see his point. How often have we chased the dream of progress only to see it perverted? More often than not, haven't the machines we built to improve life shattered the lives of millions? And now we want to turn that dream on ourselves to fundamentally improve who we are. Experience has shown me how dangerous that can be. How many times in the Call of Duty did I almost fall into the trap of taking shortcuts, abusing my abilities or the resources at hand? I resisted. Barely at times, because I valued human lives and considerations. Can I truly despise others who fall? Technology offers us strength. Strength enables dominance, and dominance paves the way for abuse. Darrow understood this. He knew that using technology to become something more than we are risks losing our ability to love, aspire, or make moral choices. The very things that make us human. It also risks giving some men the power to make others what they choose, regardless of the cost to human dignity. The suffering Darrow inflicted is not the end of the world is merely the seed for change. And change never comes without pain. But yet again, Darrow thinks he knows what's best for humanity. He thinks that humanity is going to be going down the path he set out and i'm afraid to tell him that you know that's not correct like like i just said humanity is not homogenous we don't all think the same way you know there will be one human who says augmentations are bad they should be banned there'll be another human that says yes what happened during that uh, catastrophe was terrible but we need to continue developing new augmentation for medical reasons and then you also have another person say no we need augmentation uh, because that country is still using augmentation or that corporation is using augmentation to up their uh, production levels so therefore we need to compete with them so there's always going to be reasons or excuses or uh, you know statements being made uh, to either support augmentation or not support augmentation. What 
Daryl has just done here is not going to necessarily change uh, how you know humans use augmentation. You know, this genie is already outside the box. You can't put it back in. Like I said, people are going to turn to black market augmentation if uh, you know, like the United Nations and other different nations decide that they want to ban augmentation. People are still going to use it. They're still going to be using it. So, yeah, his idea on how humanity is just going to let go of augmentation because it's such a dangerous technology that it will lead to our extinction, I'm afraid that's not going to happen. Because you could say the same thing about nuclear weapons. There are still many nations out there with hundreds of thousands of nuclear weapons that could turn this planet into a smoldering ruin a hundred times over 10,000 times over why haven't they uh, uh, you know decommissioned those weapons why haven't they uh, dismantled those weapons because they still see a necessary uh, uh, reason for them to exist now I'm going to say the same thing with augmentation there's a necessary reason for these things to exist you are answering a question, you know, for people who do not have the physical prowess uh, to do heavy duty work or those who have lost their limbs, those who have lost their eyes, those who have lost uh, uh, any other part of their body. They can it can be replaced with augmentation technology, you know. So, yeah, it's just not going to work. If you do this. The focus of hatred may shift to those responsible for unleashing biological warfare, leaving corporations free to experiment with human evolution. Are you sure this is your choice? So be it then. Seraph was right about one thing. It's in our nature to want to rise above our limits. Think about it. We were cold, so we harnessed fire. We were weak, so we invented tools. Every time we met an obstacle, we use creativity and ingenuity to overcome it. The cycle is inevitable. But will the outcome always be good? I guess that will depend on how we approach it. These past few months, I was challenged many times. But more often than not, didn't I try to keep morality in mind? knowing that my actions didn't have to harm others. Time and time again, didn't I resist the urge to abuse power and resources simply to achieve my goals more swiftly? In the past, we've had to compensate for weaknesses, finding quick solutions that only benefit a few. But what if we never need to feel weak or morally conflicted again? What if the path Saraf wants us to take enables us to hold on to higher values with more stability? One thing is obvious. For the first time in history, we have a chance to steal fire from the gods. To turn away from it now, to stop pursuing a future in which technology and biology combine, leading to the promise of a singularity, would mean to deny the very essence of who we are. No doubt the road to get there will be bumpy, hurting some people along the way. But won't achieving the dream be worth it? We can become the gods we've always been striving to be. We might as well get good at it. It's always abstract, isn't it? Other people dying. When other people die, we don't care. You know, it, it's, it's, it's just something that happens. But when it affects you, when you are the person who is dying, then all of a sudden everything is unfair. Everything is, is, is pitted against you. You know, you are the victim now. It's interesting how people can see it that way. That, you know, there, there needs to be necessary sacrifices. They, there'll, there'll be people who will be hurt, but it's okay. You know, we'll continue on further. Uh, uh, 
it doesn't matter how many people are sacrificed. It's always abstract when other people are dying. Because it's not you who's being affected. And that's David Sarif for you right there. You know, he was the one, he, he was never hurt. He was never uh, under threat of being killed. He wasn't the one chained up and forced to make technology for, <clears throat> for the Illuminati. He was not the one being lobotomized. Uh, his brain's been cut up and, and him being hooked up to a supercomputer. So because it's not him, he doesn't really care. He just cares about the progression of his success and his ideals. When he's in their shoes, I wonder, I'm wondering whether he's still going to still say the same things. Huh. Yeah. You worry too much, Morgan. There's nothing we can't manage given time. She's here. I have to cut this short. Keep going through the wreckage. Maybe we'll find something we can use for the Morpheus Initiative. Come in. Dr. Reed, we're so pleased you decided to join us. Where else could I go? No regrets, my dear. As Ariadne told You could retire and become a teacher or something. Do something other than this, but okay. Theseus, before he entered the Minotaur's Labyrinth, always forward, never left or right. You'll be very interested in our current project. We're breaking new ground. Yes, the Nanite Virus Chimera is quite intriguing. I'm looking forward to seeing the hybrid project up close, Mr. Page. And so you shall. But please, call me Bob. Okay, guys, that's it with Diaz X Human Revolution, the movie part eight, made by Video Games Movies. Um, yes, wow, the final missions were interesting. The debates that you know the various men in Adam Janssen's life, you know, his boss, uh, the the creator of the augmentation technology, the politician who was against augmentation and now he says he wants to control augmentation you know and uh, also eliza giving him all the choices on whether to choose either one of the three uh choices given to him by you know uh those men or choose humanity and let humanity decide for themselves what do they want to do um it's all been very interesting and I like the action, you know, <laughs> when Adam Jensen was fighting against uh, all the people inside the facility and when he was punching uh, these men in the face, it was so funny. It was so enjoyable. Like, oh, it was so good. <laughs> um, and yeah, the debate uh, on augmentation and human accelerated evolution through technology, this is something that's going to you know continue long after these men are dead you know them trying to control how humanity should uh, exist uh, in the next 20 to 30 years I, honestly i don't understand how do they th think that you know humanity is not going to revisit this subject you know because augmentation technology is world changing it's world changing you know everybody and anybody uh, who can afford it is going to get it no matter the reasons they are going to get it any military on the planet that wants an upper hand on their enemies is going to get this technology so we have to deal with the reality that this is going to be with us for a very long time maybe till the end of our uh, time in the universe I don't know you know so this is something that you cannot fight 
you know just like globalization it's something you cannot fight the moment you try to fight against it you will be fighting like a tsunami wave that's coming uh, to shore and you will be smashed uh, onto the rocks le left bloodied and mangled and that's the same thing that's happening here with augmentation instead of trying to fight it instead of trying to morph it into something that you desire you know allow humans to get a better understanding and a a a, a comfortability with this technology you know instead of trying to make them fearful of it or uh, tell them to let go of their moralities or their ethics you know and just continue to embrace the technology as it is 100 percent it's wrong it's wrong there must be a balance to these kind of things there must be responsibility to these kind of things you can't just decide that you know uh, humanity needs this technology or humanity does not need this technology it's not up to you anymore like I said before, the genie is already outside the box. There's no way of bringing it back in. So, yeah. Uh, Adam Janssen and what he has to go through, you know, throughout his life and, you know, coming to the realization that his DNA is able to accept any form of augmentation on his body. You know, that kind of information is very vital very important and i'm just wondering how many other humans are also out there like him because there'll be major corporations there'll be governments you know all wanting to get people like adam jansen for their own ends and yeah I i'm just worried about them mostly um yeah but this game was amazing this game was really amazing uh, I like the stories. I like uh, Pritchard. <laughs> uh, I didn't hear m much from Malik. Uh, you know, she was the pilot of the ship, so I guess we can't really have like a talk session with her. But it was good having her around, uh, and of course Adam Jansen, and yeah, all these people who were around him. You know, either they were the enemies or they were his allies. You know, they all had their own parts to play and they all f added their own two cents worth into the debate of, you know, the future of augmentation and human evolution through technology. And like, it's a question that can't really be answered right now. Like, I don't know the answer. All I know is that I'm leaving it up to humanity to decide on what's going to happen and this is going to be something that will be in the process for generations to come it's not something that's going to be immediate like how these men wanted it to be they wanted the answer right now they wanted to change the world right now and yeah it's just not going to work that way so yeah good luck good luck to earth in <laughs> the sx uh, human revolution good luck to all the human uh, human beings on the planet on how they want to direct their future and guys i guess that's it Whew. yeah it's been good it's really really been good Dulligan, thank you thank you very much for suggesting that i should react to this game and thank you to all those who stayed with me from part one all the way up to part eight uh hopefully you guys enjoyed my reactions just as much as i enjoyed watching uh, the gameplay and guys, remember if you want to check out the original video as well as uh, video game movies YouTube channel, the links are in the description below. Um, if you like my reaction, please give me a like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos. And I'm going to be checking on more videos surrounding DSX Human Revolution. I've been given some suggestions. And then I've been told that I should react to another DSX game. I'm not sure what's the name of it again, but I am going to be reacting to that as well uh, in the future. And until next time, next week Friday, good night. <laughs>